Welcome to the Sky Podcast. How is living in a different country though? Like Chris and I were just talking about Sobrang nahihirapan daw siya to follow an Australian accent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my yesterday, gosh. Yesterday, we, we had a guest yesterday. Um, it was Inka. Yeah. And she, she, we were talking about accents and um, y- your voice and how different... Different people have different voices and it... It, it depends on how you say things, basically. Like, yeah. It's like body language. It's like yeah. voice language, something like that. And so we were just saying that it, for me, the hardest accent to do is an Australian accent. Get, get, how was it for you when you moved to Australia? Did you have a hard time understanding them or do you have an accent now yourself? <laughs> no, I don't have an accent. <laughs> I honestly, I, I didn't want to really be the type to arrive back to the Philippines and suddenly have an accent. Oh, you yes, know those that's people? The oh. That's the worst. That was Australian. Bang layo layo. They're like, you've been there for a year and a half and you have an accent. Please. You know, but there are those people that come back from abroad and then suddenly they're this whole new person. So oh. I was really trying to make sure that I was still preserving my accent. But I guess there was some sort of a twang, but it wasn't Australian because I was like, my best friend is from South Africa and then my other best friend mm. is from Australia, uh, America and then from the UK. So I had this weird weird mix of an accent um you had a but, un slang <laughs> yeah i know it was like some random accent um uh, but i eventually came back and got rid of that i'm i'm now you know filipino accent all the way um <laughs> but it was it was a great experience i loved i loved traveling and i think you know because i had to rush come back to the philippines um when like when the pandemic got bad there was like I think four months of not being able to go home. And then I was like, oh my gosh, am I going to be stuck here? And then suddenly they opened up like just um, a few, like three weeks, I think, of flights. And my mom was just like, okay, just get a ticket. And so I had two weeks to just pack up everything and leave. Um, And so coming back now, I think that's only when you realize how much you miss it. And oh my gosh, that independence and, you know, being able Mm. to just kind of be control of your, like have control of your schedule and not having to ask permission, you know, like, whoa. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, so it's super fun. And I definitely have, uh, what do people call it when they're just, they just like, my feet are like itching to just travel again, I feel, after Mm. that. (laughs) Did, were you able to finish university in Australia? Or was that put on hold? No, I wasn't in? able to. Um, I finished a year and a half, and so now I'm doing it online through another um, another school. So they basically the school that I'm going to now credited my classes that I had in Australia. So mm. wow. yeah, hopefully I can finish that by this year. That's my my goal. I'll what are you up taking now. up, Hannah? I'm taking up theology unexpected <laughs> wow from I mean, film to theology wait I mean yeah. theology I don't get it like, so the theology you don't get it I, I don't yeah I, I'm not familiar with it it's the theology. study of religion right yeah it's a study of religion and specifically like how it applies to like just culture how it applies to like the world and Whoa. well the course that I took up in Australia was a mix of theology and film which are two of the things wow. that I'm very much interested in so yeah that's what I did Hey, you are the first theology major I've ever met in my whole life. <laughs> this, yeah. this, <laughs> does it like lead to like sorry for my very business sounding That's know, so fine. What work that's a very tata. <laughs> I don't trabaho move after theology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's a good that's a good question. So, okay. Um there actually a lot of people ask me like why are you taking theology that's so random compared to like the, my career path at the moment. But um I don't know, from a very like from a very early age. Um my my dad is a motivational speaker and he does like leadership training. Um mm. and everybody calls me like the mini Anthony, like the mini. They call me his mini me. And so, I don't know, from ever, like, from a young age, I've always felt like I've had that mantle placed over me to be the next uh, motivational, inspirational speaker or whatever. I think you could be, though. (laughs) Thank you, thank you. (laughs) Um, And I don't know, what I found is, when I started YouTube, it was all, like, vlogs and makeup videos. And, I mean, those were necessary back then. That's, you know, how to connect. 
But I think my videos have slowly um, morphed into this, like, advice, like, um, kind of older sister vibes. Um, yeah, and, and, and I was like, you know, if I'm going to be somebody that people look up to for advice, I would want to make sure that my advice is rooted on something. And I personally um, am a Christian, so that's definitely a lot of my advice is rooted on my religion or my faith. Mm. And that's really what I get from learning about theology. It, it uh, grounds my advice into something much larger than just me. And mm. I think that that's very important because I only have uh, an understanding until here, you know. But when my, I guess, pool of knowledge or wisdom is rooted in something much bigger than me, I can draw from lots more sources. And hopefully that mm. benefits the people that listen to me as well. So that's kind of the career path, I guess, we're veering towards. Alam mo, it's so amazing to hear you talk in that way. <laughs> Parang, I, like, this girl is still 21. I have to like, keep reminding myself. Well, when I was 21, what were you I was, doing? I was you were drunk somewhere. Drunk some- <laughs> <laughs> with a hangover. <laughs> Somewhere. Dreading the next day. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that's true. That's one of the things I really respect about you, Hannah. And I was telling Slater about Thank it just you. a few days ago. Like, I really won't forget. Na. Grabe si Hannah, no? Parang, she sounds like us, but she's a decade younger. <laughs> Paano yun? <laughs> but you know what? I also really appreciate that because, I don't know, I personally have like had a lot of older friends. And um, I just love being in the adults' table when I'm like the youngest one. And I just... Literally, I'm like a sponge and I just absorb everything that people are mm. talking about. And I just love that. Like, So when I'm in a, let's say, a conversation and it's not really going anywhere and there's not really much substance or let's say it's small talk, I'm like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I've always mm. just kind of been that type to, to look for new perspectives or to look for another way to um, learn. I've just always been that type of person. So... I would, you know, like, like you guys would be the types of people that I'm like, oh, let's have a dinner party. Let's talk about everything. I want to learn about it. <laughs> like, th- Bagay tayo my... mag-podcast. Yeah. And tatlo. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, super. We can talk about tech. We can talk about YouTube. Anything. <laughs> if you guys want to hear the full episode, you can. Check us out on Spotify. 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 It's free, guys. It's free. See you there. Hi, podcast. Hi, podcast. <laughs>